Hello there, my name is Daniel Ambühl. I'm a member of the Swiss Tech Beetle Society and today I would like to uh, tell you some things about uh, an idea that we had that we would like to help realize. This idea is that we would like to uh, build up a beetle zoo somewhere in Europe. And it means that we uh, would like to make a special uh, place where we can show the insects, where we can uh, make educational with schools, where we can make uh, scientific research about the life cycles, captive breeding methods of beetles. Um, uh, also, that is a touristic spot, uh, because it should be an attraction to show the people the most spectacular uh, uh, beetles on the world. Uh, it should be entertaining too, this beetle too, and of course it should be a place where we can think about environmental aspects of uh, beetles on this uh, planet. And the reason why I think that uh, we could help doing this is because uh, we have all these uh, very spectacular beetles um, in our breeding our laboratories and uh, we don't have them dried, we have them um, alive. So I will show you some of them. Um, of course it's interesting to present to the people not the dried animals. No, we want to show them the real ones, the living uh, uh, people, so that we also can study um, their behavior, that we can see them, how they move, how they walk around, what they consist of, how they manage to survive, where they live, in what kind of habitats. And this one, of course you probably know it, is the world famous oh. elephant uh, beetle from uh, Middle uh, America. He's a very, very strong guy. If I try to uh, hold him here and keep, uh, he will not get, yeah, uh, so, uh, because I want to show it to you very closely here on that piece of a uh, watermelon. It's um, one of the animals that you think, why do people uh, know an elephant even where they don't where they don't live. Everybody, I think, in Europe, who is older than four years, has seen a living elephant already. But uh, nobody has seen a living elephant beetle uh, yet. And it's the same probably for for um, us in Europe too. Um, we have seen a living elephant since we are three, because every zoo in Switzerland has an elephant or a giraffe or whatever, and I'm not against that. I just want to say, why don't we have the chance to see a living stag beetle, the biggest beetle in Europe and the biggest beetle in Switzerland too, and uh, not only the biggest, but the most spectacular, and everybody knows a pictures of the stag beetle, but why... Uh, haven't we yet seen a living stag beetle? Because we probably don't uh, look for them, but also because nobody um, uh, cares for them in, in, in zoos or where, wherever. They don't have them because they don't know how to breed them in captivity and it's forbidden to take them from the wild. But we can breed them in, in captivity and they have good reproduction rates as all of the uh, beetles and so we can show it uh, to you and we can show it uh, also to the people. I want to show you here a, a little pair of Swiss uh, stack beetles. Here is one, is the male. It's not a, a monster but it's a nice one. Now we try to take the elephant beetle on this piece of bark, tree bark. So he can sit here and be with us for the next few seconds while I show you oops while I show you while I show you this nice stack beetle from the, from just around the corner here. It's a little habitat where they live and where they enjoy enjoy being. And of course we should give 
young people but everybody the chance to study the habitat also of these animals. That's very important especially today because we have started uh, already a long time destroying their habitats where they live. And look here's the female of the stag, the, the, the female of the stag beetle and these animals they are not uh, rare today because uh, everybody's picking them for their insect collection. That's a lie. They are rare because we destroy their habitats, especially old hollow trees uh, where they can where they can live and where the female that you see here where she can lay uh, her eggs and uh, where they can uh, build up new population. So if we want to um, restore these old populations on places where stag beetles lived in earlier times, so uh, we can help from the Swiss Stag Beetle uh, Society because we know how to breed and we also have a stock of captive bred animals that we can transfer back to Swiss nature because they come from Swiss nature. So that's another point. So that's, now we have beetle from Middle South America, from Europe. Now I will show you some uh, another one. We just put them here on this piece of bark to see that this collection is really rare because nobody can show you these animals in one spot. Now this is a nice one. This year. Well, you probably have seen already in pictures or in YouTube videos. But, but why didn't you have the chance yet to touch it and to look at it? Because they are not poisonous. They are not stingy. They are mostly not dangerous because some have mandibles that are very uh, strong and they are not expensive and uh, because to hold them this is not a real thing uh, like holding a rhinoceros this is a, a small uh, thing where you can care for also as a child that's why in Japan breeding beetles is so uh, popular today and the, uh, one of the other reasons that is very important uh, about breeding beetles and especially if you want to hold them at home is their feces, their excrements, they don't stink. They smell like normal soil of the forest and especially in Japan where hygienic um, things are very important or this is another very good reason to, to hold this very nice uh, uh, beetles and to show them in a beetle zoo. Now we have this um, very nice Dinostis Hercules that you see here is from the Caribbean island of Dominica. It's a little bit south of uh, Guadeloupe, also it happens to be a uh, subspecies of uh, Guadeloupe and of course this is uh, one of the most famous beetles because it's the longest one while the Elephas beetles and, and, and associated uh, species are the uh, heaviest uh, ones. We have still more. This um, here is probably one of the beetles that could be a little bit dangerous if you don't handle it right because this is the famous Titanus beetle from the Philippine island of Palawan, a little bit north to the Sulu Sea. And it, this is, in fact, a small one. <laughs> it can be much longer, about two centimeters longer than they are around 12 uh, centimeters. And this is also a very nice um, animal to show because um, they rarely fly around. You can hold them like I do it here without um, them flying away and escaping from your point of view where you want to study them and have a, a look at them. Yeah, now this is from Asia, huh? This is from... What is... What we need more? Ah, from Africa. We need, we need a little from Africa too. And the one very famous one from Africa and I think that you guess what it could be. It could be this one. This is the Coryoptus, the famous Coryoptus uh, beetle from the tropical rainforests of Africa, though they are very clever in holding themselves to the ground. So I, I present it to you like it is here, and I present a female to you on this 
piece of board here so you can see male and female together. They were very uh, rare in uh, um, in the beetle breeding scene because uh, they need a lot of discipline to breed. It's not very complicated, but you must be exactly in following the recipe uh, for the rearing and breeding process. And that's also what we from the Swiss Zach Beetle Society uh, make. We make formulas for substrates for beetle breeding. We already did it for flake soil and for kimchi and we give you the recipes for the breeding process of uh, of these beetles. And that's what you need to have um, nice and big uh, beetles in your in your beetle cell. So the lady here, the Swiss stack beetle lady wants to escape. Now we give them a place to be. That is male also wants to escape. So I probably put them back to the place where they are because they feel uncomfortable at the moment so that I want, don't want to stress them. The others, they like to be in a place where it's, where it's wet and warm but for the most of the, for most of the other, um, I put in here, this male here. Now what we have, we have uh, Caribbean, South America, Asia, Ah, oh, one is left. Australia. Look here, this. This is from Australia. Isn't this a nice one? It's the, probably the, the the most beautiful. It's the most beautiful stag beetle of the world. It's Follock, famous Follock, Rognatus uh, Mulleri, the rainbow stag beetle, as they say, or the Christmas stag beetle, because they look like a living Christmas balls for the trees, Christmas tree. Now we have all from all continents except Antarctica we have now beetles. Do you know beetles are the biggest order in the class of insects so there are there's no other group with so many species in any class of living organism than uh, Coleoptera beetles. So that's also a reason why we should have one or two of them in the zoo, isn't it? Because there should be three to four million species on this world and we have discovered only around a quarter of them and described them until now. So there's also a big amount of species that we until now didn't have uh, described. And insects, they are the most prominent class of, of animals together with the microorganisms like the mushrooms or bacteria to decompose plant materials and to help build up the structure of the humus on Earth, where uh, we live from that also because we want to plant our our um, our vegetables and whatever to eat from them. So they help recycling all the old plant material. So have a look at this beautiful collection here: Goliotus, Elephos. Titanus and the Hercules people and here on the slice of the melon the two big Falacrognatus and Mulleri. So if you want to help us building up a beetle too in Europe it would be the first one uh, that we know there is no other at the moment and we have the possibility to breed all the animals for this but uh, you could help us um, first with a place, uh, with a house uh, where we can be. It should be a place where it's fine for touristic reasons, also where you can come to very easily, uh, where you can have a, a little uh, space uh, to make some room for schools and for scientific uh, things and so on. And of course we need money, but you know if we're talking about money, when breeding beetles, uh, let's say if we would keep 40 to 50 uh, species uh, permanently in a, a beetle zoo, that would cost around half of an elephant. So that's <laughs> an elephant, to keep an elephant, that's uh, double the amount of uh, permanently uh, showing these animals in a beetle zoo. So that shouldn't be a big thing uh, to finance, but you know, the biggest thing as always is interest and and devotion to a special theme. So if you have this please contact us at the Swiss 
that people, uh, society, you will see a contact um, uh, email address uh, below uh, or just uh, keep on watching this video so we can tell you what happened after this video. Thanks for watching.